Well, it is Friday, and that means it's time for another One Tank trip. And in honor of Black History Month, traffic anchor Deja Jones is taking us on a One Tank trip to the Brown v. Board of Education National Historic Site in Topeka, Kansas, where we learn how and why the site was established in Kansas, along with an in-depth look at equal opportunity in education. Sixty-eight years ago, our public schools looked like this, with signs like these. Right now, you are in the former Monroe School. And so this is one of four segregated schools for African-American students here in the city of Topeka. Because if you compare it to Randolph Elementary, one of about 18 segregated schools for white students here in the city of Topeka, you look at things like the windows, the walls, the chalkboard. Almost looks like a photo of the same building, just different classrooms in it. But the landmark decision by the United States Supreme Court to pass the Brown versus Board of Education case changed everything as it aimed to end racial segregation in public schools. However, changes were not seen right away. Neighborhood segregation was a big factor in the delay of integration for many years after the case passed. Because the neighborhood demographics of this area and the reason why this school was built here and the three other segregated schools for African American students, they were built in predominantly African American neighborhoods. So this is kind of the thing that you saw after Brown, is they just opened up enrollment to a local neighborhood school. As a result, this school was still almost exclusively African-American for a handful of years. Now, the building that was once Monroe Elementary School and the backdrop for the Brown versus Board of Education case serves as a historical landmark that holds deep historical roots. Like this kindergarten classroom, for example. Through pictures, they were able to recreate what it once looked like in this very room. This photo was taken in 1949. They started the court case here in Topeka in 1951 and includes also Linda Brown right there in the back row standing right in front of that fireplace whose father Oliver Brown ended up being the namesake of this court case. Another historical spot in the building is the original auditorium. A lot of events were held here um, and as I mentioned earlier this is one of four schools for African-American students but even if you didn't go to the school and you went to one of the three other segregated schools for African-American students you spent some time at this school because of this auditorium for proms, homecoming, means dances, other social events, and also the day after the court case, so on May 18th, 1954, mm -hmm. this is where the community came together to celebrate the decision as a victory, but also playing towards the future. There is so much more to explore here at the Brown versus Board of Education National Historic Site, so I encourage you to come on down and see for yourself. For One Tank Trips, Deja Jones, KSHB 41 News. Incredible. Deja, thank you so much for that story. For more on our Black History Month coverage, visit KSHB.com 